Hey everybody, I just want to apologize for the quality in the last two Q&As. This one is going to be the same. The save video function on Instagram isn't working. So my usual process for this stuff is that I will do a voiceover on a separate app and then I upload that to Instagram and answer the question and I, I type the text and stuff on Instagram. And then once it's finished, you know, I just send it off to Instagram and usually at the end of that, I can hit save video and the file will save in the, the right length with all the text that I added with the captions, etc. But right now that feature is not working on Instagram. A lot of times it's just giving me corrupted files or five second clips of uh, clips that are supposed to be like 45 seconds to a minute long. So what I'm going to do again is a screen cap of the whole Q&A. That is going to lower the quality. I just wanted to explain that to everybody and apologize for that. Hopefully Instagram gets this feature fixed soon because it's a big part of how I normally make the Q&As. What's up everybody? I'm about to go to the gym so you know what that means. Q&A 80 today. If you enjoy the Q&As, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Um, if you'd like to work with me directly, I still have half price coaching going on. Still a few slots left to fill. Uh, I also have ebooks in the description box if you're on YouTube or in my bio on Instagram. And as always, I look forward to seeing what kind of crazy, bad, shit, weird stuff you guys ask me today. All right. Until after the workout. Do you need interim maintenance calorie phases when you are dieting? No, this is advice for general population individuals, and it's simply advice to help them maximize adherence and success. And that is because when you have diets that cause you to lose a large percentage of your body weight, say in excess of 10%, or diets that last an excessively long time, like over 16 weeks, the effects on your hunger and inability to get satiated and the level of food focus, these things get worse and worse and worse, and the average person is just not gonna push through those things, and it will cause them to fail their diet. So a maintenance can help with that issue. Would a short bias fly make more sense? Isn't the only thing that's special the top? One, no. Uh, most people cannot get a full stretch on the pecs with any sort of a barbell movement. And to do it with dumbbells, you have to do it in a very particular way. The stretch is much, much deeper on any kind of a fly. So no. Second, there's always this huge misconception with like short bias versus long bias. Just because something is long biased in the strength curve, that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy in the short. In fact, most things that are lengthened biased just make it so that the short isn't the limiting factor. It's still very hard in the short if the strength curve is correct for the movement that you're doing. So you don't want a short bias fly, in my opinion. I'm training a complete novice in the gym. It's week three and they have no soreness and no pumps. What's going on? This literally does not matter for a novice, man. So it is pretty unusual that they're not getting sore. A lot of novices will get cripplingly sore initially, but that really shouldn't be the goal for a novice anyway. The only thing that matters for a true novice in the gym is beginning the process of technical mastery. So in the first three weeks, you really only should have accomplished teaching them the movements, teaching them proper form on the movements. And by week three, you're beginning to add a little bit of load here and there to, and making sure that they can actually still maintain the technique that you taught them on those movements. They shouldn't be anywhere near failure anyway. And the metrics that you're tracking aren't gonna be doms and pump. It's going to be maintaining technique with additional load. That's it. How do you manage your prolactin level? Well, man, you don't need to manage your prolactin level if you know what you're doing with compound selection. It's the same way that I can have my estradiol in range, my estrogen in range without taking any anti-estrogens. It's because I pick compounds in combinations where it isn't necessary to use anti-estrogen drugs. The same thing goes for prolactin. Don't use a gram of trend by itself and you won't have to use anti-prolactin ancillaries. So this is, I mean, this is one of the main things that people don't understand about PEDs, and that's just basic stack design to limit the amount of drugs that you have to take. And it's all about compound selection and compound amounts. When doing tricep isolations, do you always do cross body extensions or do you ever do anything else? Honestly, man, here's the truth about tricep isolations. You just have to pick whatever doesn't hurt your elbows. And as I've gotten bigger and lost mobility, that's been a smaller and smaller list of exercises. So right now, that is my only tricep isolation. Predictions for the Nuggets versus Heat series. Honestly, I cannot believe that Miami has made it to the finals. They had a negative net rating in the regular season. This team is not as good as they seem to be right now in the playoffs. I'm not gonna start picking Miami now. Denver is way more talented. I am going to stop disrespecting Miami, though. Denver in six. Does programming and exercise selection even matter? 
I mean, did you think about this at all? Like when you typed it and hit enter, did you try to answer this question in your own head at all first? So you could, if, it, if programming doesn't matter, then what I want you to do is go into the gym tomorrow and do 50 sets of legs to failure on BOSU ball squats because exercise selection also doesn't matter. And, or, or how about this? Just do one set of, of legs and you're gonna be 10 reps away from failure and the exercise that I want you to do is body weight squats. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, did you think about this at all? So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure someone said something to this that made, about this that made you question it, but come on guys. Yes, exercise selection and programming may be not the most important thing in bodybuilding, but you can't have an F in those areas. Isn't it dangerous to arch your back on overhead pressing movements? I mean, the spine is under load. Dude, no, like that's like saying that it's dangerous to put the spine under load in any exercise. That's why you have spinal erectors. Are squats dangerous because it puts the spine under load? Are deadlifts dangerous because it puts the spine under load? It's actually part of the whole point of the exercise is that it has axial load and makes your back muscles stronger, makes your core stronger. So no, it's not dangerous. That's why you have spinal erectors. Like I, I feel like a lot of people just scaremonger on every single exercise possible. Even if you don't arch your back, if you're doing an overhead press, there's still going to be force transmitted through your spine. If anything, getting tighter decreases your risk. I don't know, man, no. I heard that Arnold tore his muscles a lot. Could that be why his chest was the way that it was? Um, I've actually never heard that Arnold had an injury that required surgery during his bodybuilding career. So I would doubt the veracity of those claims. The reason why Arnold had the chest that he had is really pretty simple, man. He was just very genetically gifted in the chest department and figured out a training style that his body personally responded to very well. And that's really all that any of us can hope to do when it comes to hypertrophy training. Can getting lean permanently reset your body fat distribution once you start bulking again? So I've never seen that from, from somebody getting like normal lean for lack of a better term. Like if it's a male getting down to like nine to 10% body fat or like a female getting into the mid teens. But I have seen body fat distribution permanently change on people who got fat free, like literally contest lean, super, super shredded contest lean, like no fat left. Then when they bulk up, a lot of times they have a more even fat distribution and they used to have real problem areas. So I've seen that. How to move on after a breakup. I really have no idea why anyone would think I'm a good source of dating information, but whatever. Honestly, every situation is different and it really depends on how serious the relationship was. I mean, like it's a different story if you were married to someone and had kids together and have spent the last 13 holidays with each other's families versus if it was like a boyfriend or girlfriend of two years, maybe they met each other's parents one time, they didn't live together. Uh, in most cases though, the best way to move on is to actually move on. Delete them off social media, stop talking to them entirely, and start dating other people as soon as you feel that you're capable. And if you're not capable of dating other people yet, then fill the void with your hobbies and your family and your friends instead. And then almost when you feel ready to date, start dating again, because dating again is how you're gonna move on. What to do about low calorie expenditure, assuming you're already getting 10,000 steps a day on a cut. Well, just deal with it, man. I mean, what do you expect me to say? Like, you know what bodybuilders do, right? They lower the food even more and they just deal with the hunger. You have to be hungry to get super lean sometimes. And if that's not enough, then you add formal cardio. You know, you can add it in basically like 10 minute increments per day. The vast majority of people that get into stage shape end up at the end of their prep doing probably somewhere between 45 to 90 minutes of cardio a day. That's how it's done. What do you think about injectable L-carnitine for natties during a fat loss phase? First of all, man, and I think most naturals would agree with me that if you are injecting anything, you've broken the spirit of being a true natty. Like you're just, you want to be a drug user, you're just afraid of the consequences of real drugs. And I think it's largely a waste of money. You're talking about something that maybe makes a percentage point or two difference per week. Like, eh, sp send, spend your money on something else like good food. Arm pain from bracing on leg curls, adductors, and leg press is messing with my upper body training. Yeah, I very, very seriously doubt that, man. So number one, if you don't use straps to brace on those exercises, I would recommend doing so as anytime that you loosen your grip on stuff, it's going to um, lessen tendonitis symptoms. And that is what's going on here. You have tendonitis from something else and bracing on those exercises is aggravating pre-existing tendonitis. So deload or do whatever you need to do to get that tendonitis cleared up as you really should 
not be getting any sort of pain from bracing. You're literally not lifting anything. So straps if you haven't already as well. What metrics do you track for bodybuilding? So yes, training and nutrition, obviously I track my body weight as that's what allows me to make adjustments, adjustments nutritionally. I track several health metrics on a regular or daily basis, fasted, uh, fasted blood glucose, uh, blood pressure. Uh, I have an aura ring which tracks a variety of things. It tracks my sleep, it tracks my step, it tracks my heart rate and my heart rate variability. Although I typically don't do anything with that information. And then quarterly I will get blood work and I track a whole host of things to monitor my health. How to standardize distance from the pulley when doing cable exercises. Man, is it just me or am I getting a lot of questions today that are like where the answer is like you just do? I mean, you just do like like how do you lower the eccentric speed at the same rate for every single rep you just do you just try like count if you need to if you really need to just look at a spot on the floor and get a visual marker and stand in approximately the same place it's not going to affect the outcome of your set if you're three centimeters different how to actually stick to a diet well that depends on why you're failing right if this was my mom or my aunt or a cousin or somebody asking me for some tips on weight loss Pretty much the only thing that I would talk to them about is hunger management strategies because that's really why the average person is overweight. It's really why the average person doesn't succeed on their diets is because they get hungry and then they eat more than they should or they eat foods that are not satiating and hyper palatable and then they eat more of those foods than they should. But for the average person, the reason why a diet fails is because of hunger management. So you can look at strategies that help with that. Things like intermittent fasting, things like having a big salad with every meal, things like picking more satiating sources of energy, potatoes versus cereals and rice, uh, wheat and grain breads versus white breads. On the flip side of this equation, man, at a certain point, you just got to want it bad enough to actually stick to the diet, right? And if you don't, that's why you're not sticking to the diet. I swear I've given you personally this exact same answer to another question you asked about how to be a more disciplined person. Because at a certain point, if you are saying that you want to do something and then you're consistently not actually following through and doing it, it's because you want something else even more. You have conflicting motivations and your desire to stick to your diet and get the results of that is less than your desire to eat cheeseburgers with your buddies or to eat a bag of Cheetos when you're home or to just go through the pain and suffering of being hungry and a little bit cranky on a diet. You just don't want it that bad and you either have to reorganize your motivations or accept that it's not as important to you as you say. For people that do chest plus back, shoulders and arms and legs, does it make sense to put leg days in between? Listen guys, any split can work if you're progressing and setting PRs, but I hate that split. I think that split is stupid. And let me explain why. Because you are putting chest and back on the same day. And those are two huge muscle groups that take a ton of eccentric damage. And no matter which one you train first, the one that you train second in that session is going to suffer tremendously. Also that shoulders and arms can get their own day. And even if they get their own day, you're doing it after legs. So the quality of the stimulus is lower for shoulders and arms. If you really want to prioritize shoulders and arms on a three day split, do push pull legs, do shoulders at the beginning of your push session and do curls at the beginning of your pull session. It makes way more sense. Top three gyms you've ever trained at. So to be honest, man, I have not traveled to as many gyms as I would really have liked to, especially since becoming a bodybuilder. A lot of it was when I was a power lifter. But my favorite three gyms in the last four years where I was focusing on bodybuilding would be Muscle Factory in Tempe, Arizona, um, Desert Metro Fitness in Indio, California, and of course, Bayshore Athletic Club here in uh, Braintree. Do you think Geno Smith wins more games for the Hawks this year than he did last year? So I'm about to expose myself to my Seattle family and the rest of the audience here, but man, I just don't watch football like I used to, and I really can't give any credible football takes because I have no idea what's going on with the rest of the roster. I think Geno balled out of his mind. I think he's ready. He always had very high potential. You could even see that in his college playing days. Just didn't really work out with him when he first landed in New York with the Jets because, I mean, who does that work out for? No one plays well for the Jets. See if uh, Aaron Rodgers can change that. But, I mean, he's had his time prepping in the league. He's got the talent. I don't see any reason why he individually can't perform better this year than he did last year, and I would count on that happening. 
Why do some of you guys who are Q&A veterans who have been here for like a year insist on asking me these injury and sensation questions as if I can go in your body and tell you what's wrong? No, it is not normal in my experience to get cramps on seated leg curls in your hip flexors. And no, I can't tell you why 60 degree incline press is hurting your shoulder. Do something else. What are your favorite physiques of all time? Honestly, I don't even really like bodybuilding physiques. It's not my thing. My favorite bodybuilder of all time is Dorian Yates, but that's because of his mind, not because of his body. Honestly, I, I'm more attracted to the training side of the whole equation. For me, it's just that competition provides the necessary objective crucible to burn away the b and show you which practices yield optimal results. It's a way to test yourself in the real world to see how far you can go. And that for me is important. But that said, I guess if I had to pick a physique that I thought was incredible, it would be 93 Flex Wheeler, probably the most beautiful male physique I've ever seen. Alrighty, everybody, that is the end of the Q&A today. So you already know the advertisements that I'm about to reel off. Number one, if you enjoy the Q&As, please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. If you want to work with me directly, I still have half-price coaching going on, so just shoot me a DM or look for my email in the description box on YouTube. That said, um, there is not going to be a votable video topic for tomorrow because I'm still working on the top 10 exercises for hypertrophy playlist. So I'll either put out the next installment of that tonight or at some point tomorrow, and we'll cover back thickness. So I think that's it. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, leave any comments or questions in the comment section below. And as always, friends, enjoy the rest of your day. It is the weekend, so hopefully you have something fun planned. Enjoy.